PPP, they've set December 6 for the contest for primaries for the party as they hope to annex the presidency from the NDC after the 2016 general or presidential elections. And the price tag for whoever wants to contest is 85 or 85,000 Ghana cities, I believe, yes. 850 million old cities. Yeah. I don't have to be in the past. I guess I have to quote from the newspapers as well. So we have Michael Quay Jr. He's a legal practitioner, but also a member of the MPP. Uh, you're still with MPP Great Accra? No. Okay, welcome. No. Thank you very it's much. It's been a while. Yes, uh, it's been a Okay, uh, and uh, uh, finally, you got the date right. Um, how come? Was it after con immense consultations? Well, uh, let me start by saying a very good morning to your uh, very cherished viewers. Of course, your very good self. And uh, to add that, no, a lot of people have gotten this uh, very wrong, that the date for the primaries is uh, December 6th. Um, the National Council met on Friday, and the National Council is the second highest decision-making body of the party. And among other decisions, the decision was taking that December 6th will be a tentative, and this is the word that a lot of people have missed, a tentative date for the presidential primaries to be held, i.e. that is the last date by which it can be held. And if you listen to the General Secretary, um, Kwame Japon, very well, that was a tentative date. And he, he's actually also... Uh, uh, mentioned that on June the 19th the National Council will reconvene and when they reconvene then um, a final decision as to finality of the various details will come out because there are some people who are saying that it should come in a bit earlier some are saying or oh, we could wait to the last date because our Constitution says we should do this 24 months to the general election. So the last day we have is December 6th. And some people are saying, why don't we do it a bit earlier? So if there are any problems or any delays, it wouldn't go past the 24 months. So these issues are being considered. And uh, I think that uh, a consensus will be arrived on with regard to that matter. Mm. So June 19 it is for the final meeting. Yes, yes. Then they, they, the decision will be taken as to which very date. Very, very now, good. Now, if you look at the permutations and the likelihood, and we know that the Constitution also states that clearly, at least you should have it uh, two clear years before the main general election, that is, if you are in opposition. Um, which one do you think, looking at um, current uh, activities within the party as far as its rank and file or its grassroots are concerned, ideally will we'll, we'll bode well for the party in order for it to have the needed footing for whoever also is elected to have the needed footing for the 2016 elections? Well, I think that uh, this is a matter of uh, pros and cons in terms of the decision being the deadline is December 6th. Do we have to wait for the deadline? Some people say no. Some people say we can do it in December. And we're also looking at various things, various elections which may disrupt um, the whole process. For example, the district, uh, the uh, assembly elections, where assemblymen are going to be chosen and so on and so forth, and all these various calendars. So we're going to consider all those matters before the decision is made. So it's going to be an issue of brainstorming, and then whatever decision wins the day is what will be pushed uh, forward. But what has been set as definite is the fact that the primary uh, nominations have opened, i.e. you can go and pick your forms. It started from June 6th and closes on July 7th. So in the meantime, whilst the decision is being made as to when the Congress itself starts, this window has been opened for people to go and pick their forms, fill their forms. It's a very tedious form to fill requires a lot of details and a lot of information. And once you've filled in all those things, then you should be able to uh, move ahead accordingly with it. Does that not say a lot, um, especially when a decision was not taken at that very meeting that was convened over the last week? Oh, well, you see, the, the issue is that they had so many matters to consider. 
And when it came to the date, obviously, as I said, there are so many facets of information that they had to consider. So I guess it would have taken an extra longer time to be able to decide on that one in particular. So while the forms in terms of nominations have been open and people are getting on with it, why don't we take some extra time? People can even go and consider the issues, and then we can make a final decision on June the 18th. There's no hurry at all because we have a lot of time uh, to make this decision. Even if it were to be in September, that's about three or more months uh, for us to be able to engage ourselves with regard to this vote to choose a flag bearer. So there isn't a problem at all at the moment. I think that uh, they are just trying to take their time to make a very good decision uh, as far as uh, the party is concerned. What do you make of the calls, and you have also cited it this very morning, uh, about the fact that, well, perhaps the date needs to be pushed forward early on, unlike oh, yes. I mean, perhaps also. I, 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 it's that's been that's the opinion, so. as I was saying. I mean, opinions are like noses. Everybody has a nose. Um, but at the same time, um, that is their suggestion. Their suggestions would have to be considered in the arena that is at the National Council meeting where we have a lot of stalwarts, we have a lot of reasonable people, we have a lot of considerate people who will sit down and just consider what is best for the party for us to uh, decide our date. So for me, uh, uh, there's nothing wrong. In fact, a lot of people have also expressed concern on uh, various issues that are going on in the party. And uh, I smile sometimes. I'm like, look, this competition, in competition, some people may try to take advantage and say that, oh, I am better than this person, and the person's people get annoyed. Why do you say you're better? And so on and so forth. But by the time the competition finishes, everything should come back to normal. And I want to assure the general uh, public that they shouldn't worry at all about the MPP. We're just organizing ourselves, reorganizing ourselves. And as soon as we put everything together, I believe, especially by the time we finish a flag bearership, the party will be ready, united. Then we can put together our policies as to what we can offer as an alternative. Um, we don't want the NDC to fail. What we want is that if the NDC is doing 10%, we are saying, no, that is not enough. We can do a higher percentage. If the NDC are doing 50%, we are saying, no, it's not enough. We want them to get to an optimum, which is at least an A, 80%. And then we can now debate on how you are achieving that 80%. That is the kind of Ghana we want. And we are just waiting for the opportunity to put our final things together, look at the party's plan in conjunction with the flag bearer's plan, and then we can amalgamate it and move forward in one united direction. Uh, following that uh, very conference you convened in Tamale, and the matters that perhaps also may have occurred thereafter, um, how crucial do you think it, it is as a party that your campaigns, whether they're among individuals who want to contest a flag bearership race, are uh, convened in such a, a manner that is amicable enough and, uh, and, and, and not very much destructive to the political fiber, so to speak, of the, of the party? I mean, sometimes I wonder when people get worried about, uh, in my humble opinion, uh, little issues like this. For example, one of the biggest issues that came with regard to that conference was a call from quite a few people that the old guard should be removed and there should be a transformation. Some of us felt there should rather be a bit here, a bit there, sort of a mix and match. Some too felt the old should stay. That's opinions. So we are bound to have controversies, people having high-pitched voices and so on and so forth. And eventually, it looks like almost all the old executives were removed, apart from Otiko and uh, one or two uh, deputies or so. But if you look at that trend, it hasn't done anything wrong to the party. They are saying that we were not happy with certain things that went on, and so therefore we want new sets. So the warning to the new sets too is, you also come and deliver. If you come and you don't deliver, we'll remove you. That is politics. So for me, anything that really uh, was supposed to have happened at Tamale, as long as it wasn't violent, as long as you weren't insulting people, especially insulting their person, then it shouldn't be a problem. I mean, let us be very, very frank here. You remember Fonka Games? I mean, what happened in this country? The insults, calling people this and that. Some of the words, I mean, of course, I don't think they are palatable enough to repeat it here. 
But Ghanaians will wish to forget some of those contro controversial issues. General Secretary of the party calling the founding member names and so on. But even they have put themselves together. So I want to assure the general public that this is not something that uh, they should worry about at all. In competition, yes, there's a bit of hue and cry here, a bit of loud voices raised here. But uh, it's not something which is very uh, uh, peculiar uh, uh, to politics. For the sectional generations in the party, and I, I use this very uh, phrase uh, advisedly, we're talking about the, whether it could be the founding generation, those thereafter, and you, the young uh, generation as well. How are you making sure there's that sense of unity and, and, and that unity of purpose in how politics is conducted within the party? You see, the thing with politics is people come in there with their personalities. What you are is what you bring in. And as a group, the MPP, we like to come and compete. There are a lot of people who have complained that why have some people even dared su to suggest that the previous flag bearer should be allowed to go without a contest? And the contest is that why should Mr. Chairman Ting or anybody else compete with Naneko Fadu? And some people have said no. Let us leave the spirit of um, competition. I don't see anything wrong with either suggestion because it's about consensus. If Mr. Alan Chairman Tin decides to agree that Nane Kufuado alone should go, there's no problem. If at the same time, too, Mr. Alan Chairman Tin too says, look, I think I can beat Nane Kufuado because the MPP delegates are ready for me, he should come. I think it's the best way to have democracy. And I shudder and sometimes worry when I hear especially my... Uh, beloved friends on the other side in the NDC make, oh, they are the uh, uh, proponents of democracy, and yet they are trying to say that Nanado should go alone and so on and so forth. Nobody's saying that. Was that not true? It's not true. But even if it was, because I like to play devil's advocate, when Mr. John Mahama was going, did he go with anybody? Roland, you are in this country. Did they allow competition? Did they allow anybody else to pick the form? Didn't Mr. John Mahama go alone with acclamation? Why is it that as for them, they can even is, have... Is it not because that acclamation was, was existing and was vis uh, visible for everybody to see? Visible to who? I mean, to they should let to, the to, forms... To, to their own publics. They should, they should let the forms be available. You understand what I'm saying? Because we even had a case where a previous president went and held President Mills' hand for the Swedish Declaration. All of these things have happened in their party, not in the MPP. Nobody in the MPP has ever gone to hold anybody's hand for a Swedish declaration. Or there's not been a case where President John Mahama has gone, uh, anybody has gone unopposed. Mm. No. We go with democracy. Mm. We go in a situation where Nana Ekufuado is standing for competition. I'm trying to tell the NDC and the rest of Ghanaians that even if the MPP decided, for whatever reason, that Nana Ekufuado should go alone, where is the crime? Mm. Because it's happened before. Well, I do, I, do, I do understand your point, but for all the questions I've asked, I've never even mentioned the NDC, but you seem... Oh, no, I just, I, I like because to refer to my brothers because they are my brothers, as I said, my and, beloved brothers. And, and they brothers. try to make the inferences and they, the and they try to sometimes pollute the public atmosphere by saying that MPP is not democratic by suggesting this or that. There's another perception you have, just uh, because you are direct competitors. So Very, that, very much. And as I said, if you realize I've not used any degrading language uh, against the NDC, I've just referred to them in a very um, uh, a nice way. Because after all, at the end of the day, I always keep saying this. The NDC are just rivals in politics. They are not our enemies. But if there is a point that you want to rebut, you rebut it in a nice way, put the issue to the general public, let them consider. Mm. Did John Mahama go unopposed? If yes, then why can't Nane Kufuado? Mm. That is the kind of thing we are saying. But at the same time, I believe in the spirit of competition. I believe that Mr. Chairman Ting or anybody else in the party has a right to contest. They have the opportunity to contest. And when the competition comes, may the best man win. That is the kind of party that we want. So whether it is competition or consensus, I think the MPP is allowed to have either, depending on what the leaders themselves agree. I am not the one, I'm not part of Nanado's campaign, I'm not part of Alan Chairman Ting's campaign. The two of them are big men. If they decide that they want a consensus and Nanado says, you know what, 
I've decided I'm going to sit down for Alan Chermantin alone to go. That's also consensus. And we can have that either way. But the most important thing for everybody to know is that democracy includes consensus. Mm. Uh, in the, um, the, uh, there's a pu there was a publication that was made um, on, in the, well, was it 4th fourth, fourth June edition of uh, the Daily Dispatch? And it was from uh, Atta Kennedy who was writing from his, um, his base in the United States. And, and he, he thought that, crucially, um, the executive also needed to stamp the authority on what needs to be done in terms of what the rules should be, not necessarily what should be put on paper, but what should be respected by way of um, what should be said and what, what, does, what doesn't, doesn't need to be said. Do you think also that's the way to go? Well, I don't understand the, 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 the question totally. He, Atake says that as far as these very wranglings are concerned, mm -hmm. whether there would be competitions between individuals who would want to contest the flag bearership race, the executive also, currently elected, need to establish some ground rules so that the way is clear and, and there's some forward march as far as this is concerned. I, yes, that is, that is very good advice. And uh, on that point, there have to be some ground rules established. But here's the difficulty. Most of the people who are doing these things are doing it on places like Facebook. They are known party supporters, but they are not party well, officers. Well, we, we've seen some instances where groups have even marched to your party headquarters. Too. Thank you very much. And when you went to look into it, it consisted of former this, former that, former this. Are they not lobbying groups? They are, well, you don't, you, you don't understand what I'm saying. Okay, let me just try and explain it further. It is very difficult to sanction somebody who is not an officer of the party. So they may be a lobbying group, but they are independent people. So if the party, for example, uh, Mr. Roland Walker, is part of a lobbying group, but you are not a party officer, and you go and say, we want Alan Chermanting, for example, how is the party going to sanction you? This is the, the, the problem. So unless it is a party officer, then it makes it more difficult to deal with. And when you sanction the party officer, in what way? How are we going to do it? If you remember, Mr. Paula Foucault came out with a warning just last week. And after that, I've seen that everybody has sort of chilled a bit, uh, sort of piped down with regard to those utterances and so on. Um, Nana Kufado's camp came out and gave a press statement that they are not involved in those calls and they are not interested. Mr. Alan Chermanting, over the weekend, he used the word vitriolic. He doesn't want vitriolic or nasty words said under this campaign. So you can see that the leadership are sending the right signals. And we are hoping that the rest of the uh, uh, people who are behind them, uh, uh, what we say in the local parlance as Echitafo, or in uh, English you can say the Fulobaks, the follow backs well, well the follow backs or the H HHI for so yes. to speak uh, as in local parlance uh, where do they get their support from because even to undertake some of these activities you need some level of you know it's funding very, and some level let, of let support. me explain something to you that's very very funny in politics Roland you know there are some people who are you remember even John Mahama's campaign you saw a lot of adverts then they written under sponsored by Eduasai sponsored by this individuals without getting permission from the top they want to be so keen that they go and sponsor some of these lobbying groups. Just part of their enthusiasm for exactly. the party. Exactly. Trying to show or how individuals much, no, who would the, want to contest. Showing that they support that individual. But what they don't realize is that by doing that, being over enthusiastic, they rather go and mar the party's name. So that is why Mr. Paul Afoku came out strongly. I heard him on so many uh, 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 stations, including one of your sister stations, Asempa FM, saying that this will not be tolerated. And I must say, uh, in the last uh, seven or so days since he was very emphatic with regard to his statements, I haven't seen those sorts of uh, things uh, pop up. But dealing with people, it's a human organization. We're talking out from Accra all the way to Zabzubu, Tatali. You know, it's very difficult to even control one region, let alone uh, the whole country. But we are doing our possible best to let people understand that the contest is not something about acrimony. It is about competition. And sometimes some people are a bit uh, over-enthusiastic. But 
we don't want the public to worry. We want them to know that this one is, uh, excuse me to say, uh, a local issue that we are dealing with. Once the Asante Hene emerges, all the people who were fighting with him will come down. They say it again. Ekunyato, I pray. Ekunyato, inti omo pray. Apelehi. So just wait. Kapelehi atan. Be kawo manche. Be nothing anojo. So please don't worry. At the right time, the MPP will emerge, and you will see the plan that we have for Ghana. Uh, so far, have you been happy with the level of support that uh, the top leadership of the party, not necessarily those who have been elected? But sometimes we tend to have this, oh, a leading member of the party, so to speak. Those type of individuals have given to the current national executive. Um, just in, in pursuant of some of these ideals that you know, would want firmed up. Well, um, it depends. Because some of these leaders, they are so-called leaders, but uh, it's very difficult to, to deal with them and to see what uh, uh, they have in your mind. Because... As I said, somebody claims to be a leader, and yet when a party issue comes up, they don't sit in a conclave to reason out what to come and say outside, and they come and give us their opinion. Unfortunately, the media picks it up and makes it look like it's the opinion of the party. Whether you're a leading member or not, if you go and say something that is not coming from within the inner echelons of the party, then that is your personal opinion. And it doesn't necessarily represent that of the MPP. Mm. And uh, as a result of that, uh, have we, we've not seen the party executives and, and those individuals that matter come to condemn some of those comments as well. Just well, because you know, they come from very senior people. No, it's, it's very difficult to just come out and condemn. Because two wrongs don't make a right. So they do it on the quiet. So, no, it depends. Some have been condemned openly, some have not been. But two wrongs don't make a right. If, for example somebody has come out to say something about the MPP, which he was not supposed to do. The answer is not necessarily in going on radio to condemn them. It depends on what you want to do. So the party would look at it, the party would analyze the situation and decide what is the best route to respond to this act or to this issue that has been dealt with in a very bad or sometimes in a good manner. So I just want people to understand that political parties are not churches. Because even the churches, there are disputes. The only difference is that I don't think it is fair for a leading member of the church, when he has a dispute with the church, to come on radio and come and give their personal opinion as if it represents the church. That would not be accepted. So I think that with regard to political parties as well, this kind of behavior can never be accepted. And I pray to the media that when a leading member speaks in the MPP, don't say it is the MPP who is saying that. Arthur Kennedy, for example, he's come up with some opinions on how some people are corrupt or this or that. That is his opinion. It is not the opinion of the MPP. There are also opinions within the MPP of him also being corrupt. That is their opinion. Nothing shows that when he was director of communications, he really did those things. Well, so variously, some of these comments tend to also influence public opinion. And that is why, thank, thank you very much. And that's why I wanted to come. It is commentary. That is a, the, the, the word I, I'm actually very and happy. So far, and so far as they influence public opinion, they also oh, tend that's what to I'm influence so we also decision have making to, at some point in yes, time. Yes, exactly. Wrongly so. Because some of these comments can be taken out of context. But we are saying that in the real context of the word, until, for example, the general secretary of the party comes to tell you that this and this and that happened previously, I don't think anybody, especially an outsider, who is not part of the setup, and who doesn't know what is going on, and who especially is all the way in the United States of America can come and speak, and then all of a sudden a leading member said this, so it's the gospel. No, it's not the case. Mm. Well, opinions are crucial, especially when they're coming from very notable, credible people within mm. any firm or organization or entity, so to speak. Um, mm. But w why did the party decide to set 85,000 Ghana cities as uh, the filing fee. Oh, you think it's too expensive? I don't know. Do you think it's too much? I'm not a member of the MPP. I, uh, I, I, I don't intend contesting. So. Oh, okay. Then, then, well, they just decided because uh, they looked at uh, everything. First of all, the uh, nomination fee itself is 10,000 Ghana cities. 
and uh, the filing fee is 85,000. Um, I remember when we were contesting for the parliamentary in 2010, and at that time it was 16,000. Quite a few people were saying this is unheard of, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. But uh, eventually everybody paid, and this money really went a long way to support the party. Because remember, we are in opposition. And in opposition, one of the biggest things that we need to be working on is fundraising. We need to try as much as possible to raise funds. And what better way than to raise funds from, right now it says about 10 people, yeah, who have come forward. So let's say 10 times 85,000. Look at the smile on my face. 850,000 Ghana cities. That can go a long way. Is that the variable way. you looked at? Or are, are these the variables you looked at? Yes, you just these are did the, the multiplication by 10 and no, you decided oh, no, to come I gave up you an to example. the sum of 85,000. <laughs> no, not at all. If you can see most of the newspapers, it says about 10 people are saying that they want to contest. And that's why I came up with a figure 10. But it's not because we sat down and said 10 are going to contest. I just gave you the example. If 10 people come forward, 85,000, 850,000, that's almost a million Ghana cities that comes into the coffers. We'll be able to use this to conduct so many activities because being out of power, we don't have this kind of money. Now, one of the ideas of uh, this kind of fee is you are not paying the money from your pocket. Obama said politics is about resources, but not personal resources. The Clintons are richer than Obama. But Obama found a scheme where he even raised more money than the Clintons. Why? Yibima. Little drops of water make the mighty ocean. So now that the, the money is being collected in small, small drips and drops from a larger group of people who have confidence in you, if you are Mr. Samia or Mr. Jogate or whoever else is coming in, then you are able to show that there are so many people who believe in you that they are prepared to resource you they are prepared to invest in you. And with that investment in you, you are also bringing that money to the MPP kitty for better or even for worse. Since this very news about what the amount is to be paid or filing fee is, uh, there's been a lot of speculation that it's too high. Very much expensive. Th that is why I asked you uh, no, the, but, the, the, the but question. No, no, no. This I, you, you asked me a question I know, directly. I know, I know, I know. And I can determine whether I, I it's know, expensive I know, or I know, very much so. It was meant also a bit tongue-in-cheek, as in, do you think it's so high? Because I don't think. So whoever thinks it's high, I think that they're also entitled to their opinions. Um, because I know some people, even if you were to charge uh, uh, 20,000 Ghana, they'll say it's high. And there are some people who you say, you know, initially, the proposal was for them to pay 100,000 each. Yes. So some people even feel that 85,000 is low. Because if you want to be president of Ghana, and that's why MPP we like You need to be like the to, richest man? No, no, not at all. You need to be the most resourceful man. The man who can put together resources. Because if you can put together resources for your campaign, we believe you can put together resources in terms of money for Ghana and human resource, which is one of the biggest capital that you need as a president. You'll be able to appeal to human resource for them to want to come on board and help you make Ghana a very good country. So you're saying that if somebody is not in a position to raise enough for his campaign, yes. even at the primary level, the person won't be enough to raise enough. Uh, in fact, let me make be, this. Won't be in a position to make this easier for you to raise to raise enough for his own campaign let when he's elected. Let me make this easier for you. If and, you and are raise not enough in for the, the country, position, raise enough for the country when he becomes president. If is, you are not in the position, is, is that the analogy? If you are not in the position to be resourceful enough. Uh -huh to raise a filing fee, in my opinion, mm -hmm. of 100,000 Ghana cities for you to come then and you contest. Don't deserve to be you president. don't deserve to even come forward. Do you know president. there's a president in the world? He, he's a president of Uruguay. Uh, he's w one of the poorest as far as um, the demographics and per capita income people in Uruguay is concerned. You didn't understand me then. I, I, I did perfectly. No, you didn't. I'm asking because a question. We're not talking about your personal wealth. No. We are talking about resourcefulness. So the fact that he may be a very poor man, the fact that somebody in Ghana may be one of those who doesn't earn much, for example, a teacher or university lecturer, you don't earn much, you must still be resourceful to come to other people 
other businessmen. Mr. Michael Quigini, I get your drift. Very much. So the, the fact that he's a very poor man is not what we're talking about. I'm talking about resourcefulness and being able to attract people to you who will say, this is a good material. We want to invest in this kind of person for the future of Ghana. If you cannot attract investment into yourself as a president, how can you attract investment into Ghana as a country? So you have no business coming to stand as president. How do you link that with concerns that usually are raised in not only political circles, but in terms of what arguments are raised about whether it's funding for the parties and how they are able to, uh, so to speak, those who tend to resource them and satisfy them when they are in power? Oh, well, I mean, as for that argument, as I said, uh, with President Obama, he raised so much money for his campaign. He's the president of America for eight years. That issue cannot be dealt with because otherwise the alternative is the state should fund. And I don't think we're there yet. So I don't think that argument has anything to do with the fact that we want you to be a resourceful individual. Now, if you as president, you are not strong enough, and because somebody gave you some resources for your campaign, you allow the president to control you, I think you also do not have any business being president of this country. Because people should come and support you because they believe in you, not only because they want to control you. Mm. So it suffices to draw the conclusion that, well, if businessmen tend to support certain candidates, and yeah. we know in Africa, when the candidates win power through the political parties, mm -hmm. they are giving reservedly speculated contracts just because they supported these candidates and the parties. Is that not inimical to the political growth of our democracy? I don't know if this is peculiar to Africa because whether we like it or not, contracts are usually given a uh, procurement basis. Some people may be favored, some people may not well, be favored. Well, we do understand, but especially when we have the um, abusive nature of procurement as well as the financial regulatory laws in Africa, that should be a concern. Very much. And these are the things that uh, people like Nameku Fuadu, for example, when he was campaigning in 2012, used to always say that these are things that he's going to work on to make sure that they don't happen. I mean, as for me as an individual, whether somebody brought money in <clears throat> and is going to get a contract or not, is not something I can talk about at this filing stage because that is a whole different topic. When we have now brought in our flag bearer, then the person should come and tell us what he intends to do for Ghana. And uh, I think if they're able to do a good job, that is what Ghanaians want. We want a better economy. We want a situation where we'll be able to uh, get out of this quagmire, this very unfortunate situation that we're in. Some people tell you that it's a financial crisis. Some people tell you that uh, it's something else. So when they want to manage the words, we have do so. Some people say it is a, a load shedding management and so on and so forth. It doesn't matter the name you give it. The most important thing is that the system is not working. So if as an alternative you're coming in as a flag bearer, the first thing we want to see is this. You are able to res raise resources. So you have brought resources into the party. You remember that one thing about being a flag bearer is also about fundraising. Because if you don't have funds, how can the party go and contest? So we need to see a demonstration of that when you come in first of all to file. Then after that, we want to now see the party put itself together in a way that we're ready for government and to make sure that these contributions are not necessarily a means for corruption. We do understand that the party has in its constitution a criteria for electing whoever will be a flag bearer or can be a flag bearer of the party. Uh, but as far as the moral structure of the party is, what specifications are you looking at in an individual to be your next flag bearer? Um, for me, I think that uh, the person must uh, be a God-fearing person. And by that, whether it's Allah or God, depending on whichever is the same uh, creation. And the person must be somebody who loves Ghana, somebody who is not prepared to give Ghana's money away for no work done. If you want to take a single peswa from Ghana, you must earn that money. That kind of attitude, that kind of leader is what I seek for Ghana. Mm. And do you find that in who? Oh, I find that in all the various uh, uh, leaders uh, who are coming up. 
um, with Mr. Alan Chermanting, for example, um, because we've not had him as a flag bearer yet, we've not been able to highlight his position as a statesman. And that, for me, is the disadvantage with regard to Nanai Kufado, where it's difficult to compare the two of them at that moment as flag bearer. But as aspirants, we know that they are both very good material. If I were to use Nane Kufuado as an example, because he was a flag bearer in 2012, we highlighted some of his uh, uh, um, points. One of them was that this is a man who for eight years never accepted petrol coupons. He never accepted per diem. And you know as a foreign minister how much that is. He never lived in a government bungalow. That kind of person. He's prepared to work and sacrifice. He's not there for the benefits and the perks. But we see in other leaders, especially my brothers on the other side, leaders who are doing all sorts of things that we are not happy Talk with. Talk for your but party. No, no, as, as, that we are not happy with. And as I said, I won't don't give the examples. Yes. All sorts of things that we are not happy with and we are complaining about. So we think that this kind of exemplary behavior is a good replacement. However, if the party were to vote for Mr. Alan Chairman we are also going to highlight his good uh, advantages, his spirit, the kind of man that he is, and the incorruptible person that he is, and then we can highlight that. So, as I said, it's very difficult to say which leader, because at the moment we don't have a leader. But I'm just giving this example because, like it or not, they are the two front runners. And I think it would be unfair to just rely on 2012 history without also looking at any other permutations that may happen with regard to our Congress. Mm. Now, in, in, in going forward and trying to make sure that from the time that well, you start giving out the nomination forms and the time that you set the date. Um, how would you work as individuals within the party to, to get the rank and file ready, um, just in readiness for the whole event or the series of events that are likely to happen? It's very amazing uh, how, with regard to these primaries, I see a lot of issues on Facebook, uh, Twitter, newspapers, and I laugh. Because the rank and file, they are ready. They are, I don't even know how to say, ready in advance. And they are the people who matter. All these commentaries coming from Iceland, coming from uh, Nicaragua, and all this kind of stuff. Excuse me to say, sometimes we even have the speculation. There's a particular newspaper, I won't mention the name, who are always doing all sorts of speculation and doing this and doing that. They are wasting their time. The rank and file are ready. They are ready for the MPP to bring and put themselves forward as the alternative government for the better life of Ghanaians. That is the kind of thing that they are ready for. Because they've all been voted for polling station, constituency, regional, national. They are ready. All they want now is a go ahead that the campaign has started. People can say what they want to the delegates. Let us not take this thing onto the air and make a brouhaha out of it. And at the right time, when the right date is set, everybody will go ahead and vote. When the person is chosen, we all rally around that person and we support that individual for 2016. Mm. <clears throat> uh, why has it become important for the MPP to win the 2016 election? Beyond the issue of how perhaps um, you feel um, <laughs> or you have enumerated numerous times that uh, the current government is not managing the economy very well. I mean, it can't be anything beyond that. It can't be is, anything yes, beyond that. Yes, it can't be anything beyond that. The main reason is we feel that the NDC is not doing a good job. We want to look at all the growth areas. We're looking at manufacturing. We're looking at industry. We're looking at fishing. We're looking at this. We're looking at that. Everything is abysmal. And we think that Ghanaians deserve better. So we are providing an alternative. We don't have a problem with NDC. We think that NDC are also a very uh, viable alternative. Anybody who feels that they are happy with what the NDC has done can decide to retain them. But anybody else who also feels that what they have done is not enough in terms of all the things that have increased here, increased there, increased everywhere, they are also entitled to look at alternative. My only big issue, honestly, uh, Mr. Walker, and I must say this with all due respect, is the EC. You see, the EC is the referee for Ghanaians. EC is there on your taxpayers' money, my taxpayers' money. 
So the EC must be the referee of the strong match between Ghana and Nigeria. So EC, when there's a problem, make sure it looks as if you are there for everybody. You think that EC is not there for Oh, everybody? I don't want to go into that. Oh, but that, you it's just an made appeal. A you just made a statement. Yeah, but it's an appeal. I know. Yes, but you just and it's made an appeal that, saying that this is what they should make do. make sure that the AC is there for everybody. Yes. It means that perhaps you also have oh, you know, the you mindset can, you can that tell the AC somebody, is not there for everybody. No, no. You see, you can tell somebody that, do this. It doesn't mean you haven't done it. So you can tell somebody that, please, my son, when you go to school, don't steal. Don't take this. It doesn't mean your son has stolen. You are advising him that stealing is not a good thing to do. So I'm advising the EC that as a referee, they must listen. Because not listening is not a good thing to do. So I'm advising that they must listen more. The EC must set the rules and apply to everybody. Because if in my constituency in Domi Kwabena, you say that somebody should go home because their verification didn't show. And yet, in the Volta region, you allow somebody to also vote when his verification didn't show. Are they all not Ghanaians? So these are the kind of things we are talking about. And it's very important because I believe that this time, if you look at 2012, the police were not mentioned one in any problem. And I duffed my hat to the then IGP called Mr. Paul, Paul something. Paul Quay. Paul, Paul, yes, Paul, Paul, Terrier Paul, Paul Terrier Quay. The police behaved in a way, oh, we, we, we're even saying, uh, police, well, no, they, I mean, they are so neutral. They went to the rule, MPP, stay here, NDC, stay here. They didn't favor anybody. And we are saying that we don't want there to be clashes in this country. Let Ghanaians choose. If Ghanaians say they want Mr. Walker to be president, easy, make sure Mr. Walker is president. If Ghanaians say they want Mr. Okwe to be president, easy, make sure the rules are applied so that Mr. Okwe is president. Because can you imagine the case where Ghanaians say they want Mr. Walker as president, but because of mistakes... Let's use that word. Made by the EC, I'm the president. Has the will of the people been done? No. Why, why do you draw the conclusions? You went to court and it, it was a long Oh, that's why I don't want to. Petition. I don't want to even okay, go so back. Okay, so let's not on go that, into the yeah, subject of the petition. That, yeah. But yeah. Uh, uh, beyond the issues of the economy that you raise, as uh, being the rationale for which, or yeah. the, the more imperative reasons why the MPP needs to um, come to power, to salvage the woes of Ghanaians, is that it? The, that, that's what I'm saying. That okay. To sum it up, okay. it's the economy. It's corruption. Are you it's not, everything are you not in that worried ballgame. that political parties, when they are not in power, don't tend to perform well financially and structurally as far as the organizations are concerned? Well, I wouldn't want to use you as an example because you are an arbiter. You are the EC in this matter. So I wouldn't use you as an example. But then the Ghanaian should ask himself, since 1992 to date, which period of Ghana's history had the best economy? And if you think that is during the NDC period of HIPIC and so on and so forth and what we have now. Of course, feel free to vote for the NDC. But if you feel that it is from HIPIC to lower middle income within eight years and so on and so forth, and you think that that's the kind of thing you want to see again, then you vote for the MPP. The choice is for the voter. But we are appealing, we are humbly appealing that if they give us a chance, when we come in, we'll make things even much more better and greater for the nation. Mm. Okay, so in, in going forward, um, the, the date will have to be set beyond or before December 6th? Or yeah, could June, be June 19th December. is when they'll reconvene to make all those, uh, what I would say, specific decisions. Now the generalities have been decided as with regard to the nominations and filing fees and the deadlines for that and the fact that it will not go beyond December 6th. Now, what date would it actually be? December 6th or before, these are the issues that will be up for consideration. Mm. And uh, you, you're hoping that once the date is set, it will make ample time for the various individuals who pick nomination forms to campaign before the period? Oh, yes, very much. That because is if it's set said, later yes, than December. Yes, because if it's, it has to be set earlier, I mean before December, because anything after December 6th is against the Constitution. So that will not be permitted. So that is the, excuse me to say, mark or the line that cannot be um, crossed. But everything has to be done before that. So it could be September, it could be October, it could be November, it could be December by 6th December. But either way, I'm sure 
uh, June 19th is just uh, about 10 days or so away, and uh, we'll be able to know for sure uh, what happens uh, at that meeting. The various individuals who have been informally making commentary on the subject of the flag bearership race, that is expressing their interest, which of them most appeals to you? In terms of? Um, I, I didn't get that. The individuals who have been making commentary, either in the media, etc., um, just in relation to the flag bearership mm -hmm. race, I mean, just to put it in, in plain language, expressing desirous interest in contesting the flag bearership. Oh, yeah, okay, Which okay, of okay. them most appeals to you? <sighs> that is a very uh, uh, easy one. But at the same time, I don't think it's fair for me to come on... Well, we've uh, had certain individuals because who are key members of your party who have come out plainly. Yes, but I don't... I, 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 a, I don't, I don't do that. It's a democratic institution. Yes, I know that. And, I know and that. you pride yourself that you're the most democratic of oh, all yes, the political But you parties, see, yeah. one thing that a lot of people forget is that your vote is secret. Your ballot is supposed to be a secret yes, ballot. Yes, by your expressions and are nobody, not necessarily yes, very secret. Very much, very much, it. very much. So nobody can force you to express who you vote for. So if you decide to keep that a private matter, then that is a private matter, depending on your decision. But for me, at this juncture, where things are not... Because, you see, what will happen very soon is, let's say, for example, I come here and I say I support Alan Chairman team. Any time they invite you on a program and they ask me, I support Alan Chairman team, after a while, you'll see that the Kufuado faction will be angry. That, why is the Alan Chairman team man always being made to represent the party to, as if Alan is being represented? Same way if I support Nane Kufuado. So you don't want to be an interpreter? So it's best for Did me, you attend the, the, especially... The press conference that was convened by Nana Dedan Kufuado when he came from the United Kingdom? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so that, 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 that shows that you support him? Oh, no, not at all. Um, I remember the last time that uh, Professor Fripon Boateng had his um, uh, launch. He invited me. And I went. You were invited by yeah. Nana Dedan Kufuado's no, team? Uh, no, by Nana, Nana, Nana Dedan team. Were you invited? No, I wasn't invited by Nanadu's team. I was invited so how, by the but party. But you were there? Yes, I was there. Yeah. So I'm just trying to explain to you the example that being there doesn't mean support. But that's on your own volition, right? But that's when you were invited. Wait, yes, so I was invited. But yes, just I wonder one, that you're not thinking I'm trying to pin oh, you No, 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 not at all. But I'm just giving the example. So I went. Then people saw me on TV at Frimpong Boateng's. Oh, are you supporting Frimpong Boateng? I said, hey, hey, please. This is an MPP member who is doing this program. I'm entitled to attend once I find out about it. It could be by direct invite, it could be by information, and so on and so forth. So, as for attending the next thing, I can assure you that they were very, and some of the presidential candidates now were there. Dr. Apriku was there. Asabi was there. You understand? So, you attending mean, you the. Mean those the, who are expressing. Yes, interest. and they are even contesting him, mm. let alone me who is sitting down quietly, uh, 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 making up my own private mind to go and do my own secret ballot. So I just think that uh, it doesn't necessarily follow, even though some people could see it that way, but it doesn't necessarily follow. Okay. Well, th that's it on the subject of uh, your nominations and, and what the party intends. Now, uh, on which national issue most um, tends to aggravate your mind, so to speak? <sighs> well, this is a very, a very uh, personal one. Suba. Jida, okay. Sada. Okay. Oh, no, really I, I, I'm not asking you to make commentary on this. Yeah, no, yeah. no. It, it really aggravates my mind okay. because no, without going into the details, it worries my mind that there's a phenomenon of no work done and yet pay. That, but that's not true. So, but we're not going to the subject. And then those are the I issues that uh, are of concern to you. And now did you say? Did you say that's not true? No, I'm. Not, I'm not saying that's. Because not true my opinion that is true. Okay. So that's my opinion. All right. All right, sir. Uh, okay. Let's talk on the World Cup. <laughs> so let's spend some five minutes before we wrap up. That's very relaxing. Okay, so relax. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so far, have you been monitoring um, the activities of the Ghana team? Yes, very much. So are you, have, have you been satisfied? No. Why? You know, let me tell you something. Because I know you're, you're, you're a game person, you're a football person. Yes. So. Let me tell you my biggest worry. If you remember last World Cup, when we were preparing, we had a lot of issues. We didn't really do well in the games preceding to the World Cup. But what I liked about the team was that they did two things. The defensive units were solid, and they created opportunities. But the Samajan wasn't scoring, if you remember. But 
what I'm seeing with the Black Stars now is one lack of creation of opportunities and the defensive unit is in shambles. You mean prior to the 2010 World Cup or during the 2010 World Cup? Prior to the 2010 World Cup, the defensive unit was working and they were creating and they were chances. Creating chances. And was on so you could see that and once they gel, it would bear some fruit. But this is a case where now the defensive outfit is not really working. You know, when you have a man like Olele in goal, as he was then, he was a figure, a towering figure. You had John Mensa, a towering figure. Hans Edusape, very, very experienced. A lot of people take this for granted. And then on the right side, Pencil, very experienced. So when you had any other person to join them, it was a totally different defense. This was an experienced back four. Now what do we have? Mr. Pari, Kumsi Kumsa, Afo, Soso, Mr. Inkum, uh, uh, Inkum, like this, like that. Jonathan Mensa. So, so is Rashid, Rashid Smiler. I mean, look at all of these names. These are not. We have John Boy too. You have him. John Boy is there, but he has, you see, J John Boy would have been. The, yes, he would have been the, the, excuse me to say, the small boy among the greats. Now he's a big man. He's a John Mensa. He's not ready. So it that. means that we don't have the experience. Then we have Kwarase or Fatal. Even as of now, we don't even know who is going to be the goalkeeper. Do you know? Because you are not the coach. No, I'm saying you. Do you know? I don't know. because. But I'm not before the coach. 2010, I was not a coach, but I knew it was going to be Olili. <laughs> you see what I'm, I'm trying to say? So these are the things that worry me. Then we must be frank. Our midfield engine of either or or together, ACN and Montari, they are not the same players four years down the line. They don't have as much energy. They don't have as much strength. And ACN is vital to the success of Ghana. This time round in particular. Kevin Prince Watting, I don't think he's really at his peak. Because the kind of football he was playing for his team That's in 2010. Yes, yes yeah. it's not the same he's playing here. Mm. Andre Dede Ayu is at his peak. And he is somebody I'm looking forward to. Then we go to Asamwajan. Asamwajan is a very good player. But Al Ain. Al Ain. <laughs> Come on. When you are playing football in Dubai with a few uh, Mediterranean guys you're not ready for world cup you mean it's a holiday area it's a chilling zone so they don't take that they, they train seriously they really. don't, my brother even as samaja himself will tell you that if he were in another league huh, the spanish league or something he will be sharper as samaja is a very good player don't get me wrong but al ain but he's been a top scorer over the last yeah, couple of years but uh, the giant among the dwarfs where the giant is five foot six because the dwarfs are there doesn't mean you're a giant a real giant is the seven foot eight foot but i'm even talking about the black stars when it comes to the international matches with the black stars throughout the qualification period he's been uh, very phenomenal yeah but qualification with who with uh, egypt and so on you are going to use egyptian defense to go and me measure Argentina or Portugal or Germany. <laughs> Germany. Yeah. It's a well oiled machine. They are not playing. But believe you me, I think Asamajan is one of our best players. I'm just saying that I don't know if he's that sharp. Mm. Because, because he, the he, league there because you think he doesn't is not get very the right competitive. Competition. Yes, thank you very much. That's the word, mm. the, the, the right word. The competitiveness is not so sharp that he will be ready. To pounce on unusual You're angles. You're a very pessimistic and, uh, person as far as uh, this very black side. Oh, no, 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 no. You know what? I'm a supporter. No, I'm not saying you're not patriotic. That, no, 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 let me just I'm add I'm saying you're being pessimistic about their chances. No, you're, a pit, you're a patriotic not, not, person. Not you support all. the black stars. Not at all. In fact, despite all of this, I want the black stars to go and win the World Cup. No, it's not what you want. You, I'm, well, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Now, you see, pessimism doesn't come in sports. Let me give you an example. I support Arsenal. I support Accra. So. You always want Arsenal to win the league. You Thank always you. want Accra. And, but I knew that the way they were playing, they were not going to. They win. were not going to win. So that's what you're saying. So I'm saying that the way they are playing, they're going go to have in the first round. No, 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 oh, no, no, no. I, I, I can't. I, 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 won't, I won't want to hear that. I want positive mind. Something can happen. Look, football is football. Uh, uh, um, one mistake here, one mistake there. Eighty-fifth minute, it's still zero-zero. Ghana has beaten Portugal.
on the last match. Okay, I'll ask you about we chances. Do you believe so, in the coach? You think tactically, technically, he's there? I think that Kuzi Apia is getting there. I don't know whether he's there yet. That's a very f fearsome statement. Yes, I think he's getting because there. He's because he's getting there, it means he's not up to the standards of um, you see, the other coaches we have. We have jo Joachim Lowe. I don't, know, I don't know about Joachim Lowe, but I know we about the Serbians that we had before. We have Jürgen Klinsmann. And the Serbians seem to have a certain approach to football that benefits Ghanaian. The work ethic is the cluster in the park that is very difficult to find spaces to work in. What that means is that, one, you commit less fouls. But most importantly, it means that as soon as a player turns, there's somebody. So it means right you're questioning his technical no, 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 and coming, tactical coming, coming, abilities. Coming, coming, coming. Oh, no. I haven't. Uh, don't come. That's you, you, what... No, but you have to let me land because it's very important. I haven't seen that kind of tactical play from Kusiapia. It is more like free show, agro, less play. The Mude. Ghanaians are good. Mudia Mumbo. Mumbo. But the players too are good. And let's try these positions. Let's try <laughs> these permutations. Apart from getting. The player selection right, which I think that he's very good at. Selection. Tactics, I'm not sure yet. I want to see the kind of tactics. In fact, I'll be able to tell after the first match against Germany. The kind of way that no, he well, will uh, allow... The first match is against the U.S. Oh, the, uh, sorry. The, uh, against the, the, the second is against Germany. Yes, the, sorry. The last is Portugal. The, the game against the U.S. will be able to tell Ghanaians that, look, this is how Kusia Pia wants to play. I want to be able to see how... Setting overlapping when it's done, especially with Kuja Sangma likely to play on the left back. When he overlaps, I want to see what kind of cover. Is the person in the middle shifted in there straight away? Or is the person that he runs ahead with come and fall back? I want to be able to determine how Kusia Pia will handle those things. And if I see, then I'll know that tactics no, he's there yet. You're going to Otherwise, watch South Korea again meantime, this evening? Um, Can oh, you stay up? I don't. I, 11 p.m. I, I, I don't think I'll miss that much for the world. Anyway, you're always reading the, your the, constitution. So. Yeah, I'm the kind of person <laughs> who stays up 2 o'clock to watch boxing matches. Okay. Uh, I, I'm a huge uh, uh, sports person. I love also, I like golf, I like boxing, I like tennis, I like football. So your predictions? Rugby. You think we'll go up in the first round? No you know what? I have a sneaky feeling mm. that... We'll sneak past the group. That will shock Portugal. Hey. Because they will go in there complacent. <laughs> and in the 85th minute... Kevin Prince Park Boating will just sneak a very unusual goal because they'll be concentrating on Samajan and the space will be created for Andre Dede Ayu and Kevin Prince Boating. Then Kevin Prince Boating will score that goal and then the match is finished. Anyway, I'll still say for the morning. Michael Quay mm -hmm. Jr., he's a member of the MPP. He's been speaking to us about, well, what the MPP intends doing with this um, issue of uh, the election of the flag bearer and also giving his thoughts on the Black Stars. Well, he's very optimistic, even though he's got his own... Uh, I think areas they should, they should strengthen. Yeah. If it was the defense. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Michael Quaid Jr. Thank it's, you very much. It's a pleasure having you in the studio. We're taking a break.